Scientology prides itself on being a secretive, egalitarian religion. But in recent years, it has been revealed that the church is little more than a manipulative cult, with wild beliefs and harsh punishments for those who speak out against it. Because of its layers of secrecy, we are only just starting to learn about the bizarre and unsettling system that exists behind the scenes. From celebrity cover-ups to medical anomalies, we're counting down 10 things you didn't know about Scientology. One of the central tenets of Scientology's belief system is that all humans are fallen Thetans. Thetans are all-knowing beings, and became bored because there were no surprises. L. Ron Hubbard, the founder of Scientology, asserted that the single most important desire in all beings is to have a game. To have a game, it was necessary to not know certain things, so certain perceptions were negated. Since Thetans knew everything, this required them to abandon or suppress perceptions and knowledge. Over time, the loss of perception accumulated and certain Thetans began to cause harm to others. The Thetans have by now become so enmeshed in the physical universe that many have identified themselves totally with it, forgetting their quadrillions of years of existence and their original godly powers. The Church defines an operating Thetan as one who can handle things without having to use a body or physical means. An editorial in a 1959 issue of the Scientology magazine Ability notes that neither Lord Buddha nor Jesus Christ were operating Thetans, according to the evidence. So essentially, the whole point of your time on Earth is to regain your former position as an all-knowing Thetan. The only problem is the Church makes this process impossible, so you will continue to pay them for classes. If you know anything about cults, you know that they do everything in their power to keep you from leaving, even if you're miserable. Scientology has arranged a whole host of malicious strategies to incentivize their followers to stay. For instance, they will follow you for the rest of your life. Former Scientology members claim they hired private investigators to spy on potential enemies, sometimes for decades. Other former members told the newspaper they had to sign drawn-out affidavits in order to leave. These documents were allegedly intended to discredit them in case they ever spoke out against the church. In fact, Leia Ramini, star of King of Queens, was recently framed for murder by the church. In addition, if your family and friends are still part of the church, they're forbidden to ever speak to you again. This is a trait shared with Mormonism and other manipulative religions. You can imagine how difficult it would be to lose your entire community and cultural identity, even if you strongly disagree with the beliefs of the church. This has happened in a number of highly public cases, as with actor Paul Haggis, who struggled when he was disconnected from his family and friends after leaving in 2009. Rumors have circulated that Tom Cruise is considering leaving the church because he is estranged from his wife and daughter as a result of the same policy. It's noticeable that Scientology has many more celebrity members than other fringe religions. That's because their strategy involves making the Scientologist lifestyle seem glamorous and appealing. Actors like Demi Moore, Jerry Seinfeld, Tiffany Haddish, Jeffrey Tambor, and Nicole Kidman have been involved in Scientology, along with many others. The leadership in the church relies on these celebs to naturalize their religion and gloss over the unsavory details. They also keep an eye on their celebrity clients by hiring Scientologist employees in the homes of celebrities to report back to leaders. But in many ways, this plan backfired. Many celebrities have left the church in highly public fashion, drawing attention to the physically and mentally abusive nature of the cult. For example, Paul Haggis was shocked by the church's mistreatment of homosexuals, and Jeffrey Tambor has described the church pressuring him to leave his wife. In addition, most of the celebrities who leave the church often go suspiciously silent. Many believe this is because the church is blackmailing them. All this makes for bad press, but it hasn't prevented the church from acquiring and maintaining serious star power, like Tom Cruise, Beck, and John Travolta. For those who are simply curious, a copy of Dianetics and an introductory class are not very expensive. But Scientologists who are interested in accomplishing the major goals of Scientology, to become clear and develop their capabilities as operating Thetans, can expect to invest heavily in their spirituality. Costs can vary considerably depending upon the needs of the individual, but a rough estimate suggests you'll be paying $128,000 to reach clear, another $33,000 to reach level 3, and an additional $100,000 to $130,000 to reach level 8, which is the highest level currently available. Given the high cost to members, what does the church's balance sheet look like? Jeffrey Augustine, author of the blog The Scientology Money Project, says the church has a value of $1.75 billion. Approximately $1.5 billion of that is in real estate, primarily at its headquarters in Clearwater, Florida and in Hollywood, California. The church also owns property in New York, London, and Seattle, as well as other locales. Based on conversations with former Scientology officials, Augustine estimates that the church collects annual revenues of about $200 million. About $125 million comes from selling auditing services to its members, and the remainder comes in the form of donations. Augustine estimates that much of the money that comes in is spent on legal defense of the church. 
It seems scary to join the church as an adult, but it's even more terrifying to be born into the church. For one thing, Scientology advocates for something called the silent birth, where all present in the room, including medical staff, are encouraged to remain completely silent. In addition, as soon as the child is old enough to speak, they are subjected to sec checking, short for security checking, which is intended to ensure that the child is being raised with the values of the church in mind. Hubbard started the process in 1961 and it still goes on today. It involves an ethics officer asking the child lots of questions to make sure they aren't doing anything wrong. It can also be a way to spy on the kid's parents by getting them to say if they have heard or seen anything happen that goes against Scientology. If your parents are important people in Scientology, they might not have time for you. So a lot of children are rounded up from very young ages and raised in an isolated location known as the ranch. One ex-member said there were about 100 children there, and they never saw any non-Scientologists. They just did manual labor and learned at a Scientology school. Little is known about this off-site compound, but they certainly don't sound like a nurturing place to grow up. The organization has a strange relationship with medicine. For one thing, they believe that disease and discomfort are voluntary, and that those who suffer do so by their own choosing. Because of this, Scientology has tried to defraud traditional forms of medicine relentlessly. And one discipline in particular has caught the ire of the church. For decades, Scientology has waged a worldwide war against psychiatry. This war began with L. Ron Hubbard and continues under his successor, David Miscavige. It aims to eradicate psychiatric practice, especially psychiatrists' use of pharmaceuticals, from the planet and replace it with Scientology's own techniques. Scientology began as Dianetics, which was a supposed alternative to other 1950s mental health therapies. Scientology discourages any use of medication. Pain and other symptoms are treated by assists. For the contact assist, you repeatedly press the injured part of the body against the object that hurt it until the pain goes away. Assists can supposedly awaken unconscious persons, eliminate boils, reduce earaches and back pain, and make a drunk sober. Hubbard chastises subordinates for wearing eyeglasses, trying to convince them they could see without them, and said needing them was a transgression against Scientology. It's also believed that members should not have accidents and illnesses. When one woman developed a cold sore, she was charged with high treason. If you followed the Comedy Central show South Park, there's a good chance you've heard of their infamous episode Trapped in the Closet. The controversial cartoon, which makes fun of seemingly everything, turned its sights on Scientology for this episode. Only there was one problem. Isaac Hayes, who voiced the character Chef, was the Scientologist himself. At the time, Hayes called a meeting with creators Trey Parker and Matt Stone to tender his resignation. But it's come out in recent years that the church forced him to cancel the show. Not only this, but by invoking the wrath of the church, Parker and Stone were followed and documented for years. Marty Rathman, a former Church of Scientology executive turned critic and independent worshiper, revealed to the Village Voice a number of documents that detailed the religious sect's detailed surveillance of the Emmy-winning TV moguls. Through the help of informants, public records, and various other means, they searched for vulnerabilities in the pair's personal lives, and after exploring their personal and business connections, widened their focus to investigating actors such as John Stamos as well. Phone records, bank records, personal letters that expose some kind of vulnerability, Rathman told The Voice. They'll read stuff into the kind of alcohol you're drinking and how much prescriptions. They'll figure out your diet. They can find out a lot about you through your trash. Fortunately, the pair is pretty shameless, but that didn't stop Stop the church from trying. In 1967, L. Ron Hubbard raised a private navy, appointed himself Commodore, donned a dashing uniform of his own design, and set forth on an extraordinary odyssey, leading a fleet of ships across the ocean variously pursued by the CIA, the FBI, the international press, and a miscellany of suspicious government and maritime agencies. Hubbard appointed a special crew on the ship The Enchanter and called it the Sea Project. The British government started an investigation into Hubbard's activities and he needed a plan to escape the authorities. Lots of money was at this point transferred to Hubbard from the Church of Scientology. The Sea Project became the Sea Organization, today also known as Sea Org, or just SO and began a long process of secrecy and deceit. Essentially, Sea Org is a collection of the church's most dedicated and influential followers. It's where most of the decisions regarding the church are made, and still does a vast majority of its business in international waters. The Sea Org has been described as a paramilitary organization, and as a private naval force, having operated several vessels in its past and displaying a maritime tradition. Some ex-members and scholars have described the Sea Org as a totalitarian organization marked by intensive surveillance and a lack of freedom. It's clear that you don't want to get on the bad side of the Church of Scientology. But even more than that, leader David Miscavige has proven to be a physically abusive megalomaniac by many of the people who were once close to him. Complicating this matter is the fact that his wife has not been seen since 2007. In fact, it was Shelley Miscavige's quiet vanishing act that first set into motion Leia Ramini's fallout with Scientology. The 47-year-old Kevin Can Wait actress first stirred the Scientology pot at the 2006 wedding of Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes when she asked about the whereabouts of Shelley. I asked innocently, where's Shelley? Because I thought it was odd, Leia said on Conan. 
They were calling it the wedding of the century in the church, and with that there was a reaction of people just scattering when I asked where she was. According to author Lawrence Wright's book Going Clear, Scientology, Hollywood, and the Prison of Belief, Shelley both functioned as Miscavige's right-hand woman as well as a handler of Scientology's biggest star, Tom Cruise. And in the latter capacity, Wright claimed that she supervised the auditing of the Mission Impossible actor's then-girlfriend Penelope Cruz, as well as the search for Cruz's new partner following his split from the Spanish actress. Now more than a decade later, rumors swirl about the location of Shelley Miscavige. As anyone with a passing knowledge of litigation knows, discussing any alleged Scientology conspiracy on the internet is risky business. But the facts behind the story of Operation Snow White demonstrate that the scheme was a conspiracy involving the largest successful infiltration of the United States government ever uncovered. Forget communists, Russians, and lizard people. Nobody has ever launched a greater espionage mission within U.S. borders than the Church of Scientology. They might not have entirely gotten away with it, but it's hard to argue Operation Snow White was anything but a resounding victory and a major reason and why the church remains powerful to this day. It began with the title of a fairy tale, Snow White. That was the benign code name Scientology founder L. Ron Hubbard gave to an ominous plan that would envelop his church in scandal and send its upper echelon to prison, a plan rooted in his ever-deepening fears and suspicions. Snow White began in 1973 as an effort by Scientology through Freedom of Information proceedings to purge government files of what Hubbard thought was false information being circulated worldwide to discredit him and the church. But the operation soon mushroomed into a massive criminal conspiracy, executed by the church's legal and investigative arm, the Guardian Office. Under the direction of Hubbard's wife, Mary Sue, the Guardian Office hatched one scheme after another to discredit and unnerve Scientology's foes across the country. Guardian Office members were trained to lie, or in their words, to outflow false data effectively. They compiled enemy lists and subjected those on the list to smear campaigns and dirty tricks. Over the course of decades, the church destroyed documents and intimidated enemies. Ultimately, the operation was largely successful, and many remain afraid to speak out against the church to this day.